Hi, I'm Billy Wilson and thank you for joining me in my backyard. Today we are stripping willow sticks um, that we use to make baskets with in my tribe. I'm from the Yurok Nation up from um, Wichita, California. I currently live in Grass Valley so I have to go out scouting to find out where the materials are that um, we use. So today I was able to locate a um, patch, a couple of patches actually, of gray willow, and it's almost too late to pick them, and I had to go do it today before they um, budded out too much more. I think I my second patch is up on past the ridge, so um, I might have another couple of days for that, but in the meantime, I'm trying to um, strip one stick um, all the way from beginning to end, like my grandma used to. I used to have to do them um, and race with my sister Teresa. Some of you might know Teresa. Um, she, she and I would be racing, trying to get to 100 sticks because my grandma wanted us to help, of course. And <laughs> the only best way to do that is make us compete. Anyway, she would always be able to strip them really quickly and I was always picking them one little piece by little piece by little piece, so she always beat me. Um, but today I'm trying to learn how to strip them all at once. So let's see if I can do it. Bear with me. I got some pretty big ones. I'm not really going to use these for my intended project, but I still have to strip them. Um, my intended project, and I didn't do it right the first time. See, piece by piece. I know how to do that really well. Um, ooh, see, that's kind of how you do it all at one fell swoop. Oh, look at that. Cool. Let's see. I mostly have the big sticks here right now. Um, I thought that I would try to make a, a doll basket um, with these bigger sticks, so I gathered up some bigger sticks as well. But I'm also going to attempt to make a finer basket. My grandma always said my sister Teresa would be the fine basket maker and I would be the um, more, um, she always called it, handle basket makers like K-Roy's and lap salves and things like that. But I ha really don't, haven't made anything other than baby baskets a little bit, and not baby baskets, but doll baskets. I haven't made baby baskets because coming by um, hazel sticks to make baby baskets was, was a little difficult out here so far from home. Anyway, that one didn't work so well, but it's done little by little. Let's try another one. See how they're already, already um, um, budded out quite a bit. And this was down closer to the valley. Um, we went up higher up on the mountain also to go look for some. And I might make it. Ooh, 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 ooh. Did it. Voila. Probably makes it a whole lot faster than than my way of doing it. I'm sure there's lots of different ways to strip sticks. That's the way my grandma did it. I heard of one way that you kind of twist this and pull from that twist, and now that works too. <laughs> so excited! I'm learning new things. And they say you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Hmm, they're wrong. Just so you know, if you're an old dog, they're wrong. We can still learn new tricks every day. Okay, so then I'm going to see if this works again. Well, it gets close to the end. It gets a little tedious, a little, um, like maybe it might break off and I don't want to break them off. Even though the when you're making um, doll baskets with the, with the willow, you don't, you want to make doll baskets with willow and not with um, well, you can make them with hazel as well. With hazel's just very much has much sturdier um, abilities. Well, that one I didn't quite make, but I still want to strip clear to the end. There we go. 
one's got a little bit of a bend in it. And got to get them stripped up before they dry out. I've got them all wrapped up in a towel, the wet towels right now, but can't leave them there that long either without the towels starting to um, get tattish. And um, oh no, oh no, oh no. Okay. And the other thing I don't want to do, my grandmother had really strong thumbnails and she could just strip away things. I don't have as strong nails as she did, so using my nails too much um, when I'm doing this is not a good thing either, so I try my best not to use my nails too much. And I also used to chew on the end of it to get it started, but I find that the... Um, this one's kind of dead at the end. Um, I find that the willow, I don't know what it is, whatever that's on the willow sticks, the, starts irritating my throat. So I don't want to do that either. Um, so I'm trying not to do that. I'm trying to develop a new practice for me. Oh, look at that. Uh oh. Uh oh, see, we got some that already growing extra branches. And this one's kind of dead at the top. And we'll take that off. Maybe I'll save that little one for my sister. She likes making baskets with tiny, tiny, tiny sticks. Um, again, she was the basket maker a fine basketry and I was the big basket maker not that I've made it very many but I have made a few I have a couple that are hanging in I have a couple that are hanging in my brother's house where my dad used to live when he was still with us and when I made them I was on vacation visiting Richbeck with my dad and I went to the river and got some sticks and some roots and I sat down and made a couple little little doll baskets about yeah maybe a little bit bigger than that but not much bigger than that and when I went to leave I was taking them with me he said uh 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 those don't leave here those stay here and I said um but I was he goes nope I have to take them over to those women over at the tribal office and show off my sidewalk engine girl um, who can make baskets better than them. Anyway, that was a joke. So anyway, <laughs> that was his joke, not mine. And so it is still hanging on that wall, still years later. My dad's been gone for a number of years now and my brother lives in the home there and my baskets are still hanging on that wall. So they never came home with me. This time I think I'm going to try a bigger one, maybe maybe for a, maybe for American doll. Um, my my great granddaughter just got an American doll, and I was thinking it would be kind of cool for her to have a basket for her baby. Not that I don't even think she's playing with that baby yet. She'll probably get it for Christmas because she's only two. And let's see. Keep trying. These bigger ones are probably easier to do that with because they're not as fragile. Um, although willow is pretty, pretty stable, not as um, sturdy as hazel is, but pretty, pretty stable for the kind of baskets we make with them. Here we go, almost. Okay, I got a little carried away. I was only going to get 200 sticks. I probably got more like 600. <laughs> but, oh, here's the size of, kind of the size I wanted to make the next basket I try to make out of. It's kind of this size. So I picked up a bunch of these sticks as well. I might have to go get more of that size. Because 
while it'll take a couple hundred sticks to do the project I want to do, I have to make sure they're the same size and not all sticks are the same size. Look at those little hanger honors. Get ready to be a branch. Here we go. Oh, again, get on the end. My filling accomplished. No wonder my grandma could just rip through these. Although, when we would pick sticks, we would pick willow sticks as soon as they started um, branching out down at the river, and we lived right on the Klamath River. And then we would, after the willow sticks were done, it's about the time the hazel sticks would be ready to be picked. So then we would go get hazel sticks up on the mountain, wherever the burns were. Sometimes, back in the day, before it was illegal, when well, actually it's becoming more legal to have um, cultural fire now. But in the 70s, I have to say, my grandma was um, told if she started another fire, they would, they would charge her with arson. So she didn't start any more fires after that. And now which Speck is all just grown over with, um, with lots and lots of brush. But she would start fires that were right above our house. We lived very rural, but it was right above our house. There was nothing above us except mountainside. And she um, then two years later, or if she did it in the fall, it would be the, not the next spring, but the following spring. But if she did, she did the fire in the spring, then it would be the following spring that we would be out gathering um, hazel sticks. And... We, would, we had a creek called Ben's Creek that ran right by our house and she had a little spot under some roots of a pepperwood tree that she had all her, um, bag, her burlap sacks full of sticks that we would have collected. And we would peel sticks for days and days and weeks and months and years. <laughs> Felt like that, but it was really only probably a few weeks that we peeled sticks to get all her sticks done. And sometimes some of them would just go to waste because we just couldn't get to all of them. But she had lots and lots of basket material. And she made lots and lots of baskets, beautiful baskets. And um, also traded and gave away sticks and other basket material in exchange for, mm, well, exchange for money, in exchange for a ride out to go get the product to go get the uh, materials because she didn't drive and I was young so I didn't drive um, so we would have to get make arrangement to get to where the basket material was oftentimes unless it was right next to us um, and so she would make baskets to pay for that and I don't know she was an amazing woman oh, I sure miss her um, so I try to carry on some of the things she taught me, this being one of them, um, although she never did quite give me the, 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 um, the formula for stripping a stick in one fell swoop. Remember, she put her finger between the stick and then she never had to stop like that. She just would come sliding out of there like nobody's business, just like that. And anyway, so we would go up and here's my rear side there. We, we would go up to the mountains and get the hazel sticks and then we would put them in the gunny sacks and put them down underneath the hazel, hazel, pepperwood trees um, down under the roots right next to the creek. And the creek kind of creek didn't really run into it. It just kept it really cool. It was really cool down by the creek. Uh, anyway, so that was our experience with um, gathering, uh, gathering the sticks and gathering and peeling sticks. And still, see, I still can't get them done right. Oh, I'll get better. I'll get better. I know I will. The old dog's new tricks, you know. 
You just have to practice, 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 practice. And I probably only have about 200 sticks here. I know, <laughs> about 600 sticks here. I meant to only get about 200 because I thought, oh, I'm not gonna have time to peel all of them, especially if I'm picking and peeling. It's little by little, like that. It's taken me a long time. And they'll get all dried out before I can get them done. So that's why I'm out here doing this right now. Got to go pick up my children at school in just a little bit. Um, and one of them wants to go to the thrift store. He loves going to the thrift stores. Um, so I'll probably take him to the two that are half off today. And get him some whatever it is that he's looking for. Just got him some shirts and some pants last week. So. Not sure quite what he's looking for, but I'm glad he knows how to get good clothes at a good price. Um, see, picking and picking. <laughs> oh dear. Going as quickly as I can here. Oh, I might make it, I might not. There it goes, all but the very tip. I hope you're being entertained. I continue to watch for a while. Um, I'm going to be gathering materials throughout the um, year. Because it does take a while to gather materials. And you can't just gather, I can't just go out to the woods and say, okay, be ready. Uh, ferns, I need to I need to pick you today because they won't be ready until they're good and ready. And I'm thinking probably right around June first in that that area of time I will need to make a trip because I haven't been able to find any um, maidenhair fern here in my area, at least not so far. And um, so I may have to make a trip to Witchbeck to go get some of that. And also, I'm not sure. I know I was in Yosemite one time when right after a burn and found lots of bear grass. But I don't have any left. And I'll need some of that for the project I want to do. And I'll also need some Woodwardia fern. And the Woodwardia fern won't be ready. And I, I do know where there's some here. I'm not sure though be appreciative of me taking their big ferns but <clears throat> I know that um, <laughs> I guess I'll have to talk to Forest Service and see if there's a permit I need to do that um, and that won't be ready until the fall I am on scouting out some roots right now some um, river roots and um, and I know I can't get spruce root here because it's not the coast. I picked a very bad stick here. Huh. Oh, oh well. And so as I do my journeys and prepare those, maybe I will be sharing those with you as well. I certainly am doing this mostly for my daughters so that they can see how the processes are done and they all live so far away. Um, my youngest, well, I shouldn't say that. I have lots of children. My biological daughters are in, one's in Boston, finishing a degree at Harvard. I have one at, um, in Idaho Falls, who is, is a, um, I always call her the Director of Social Services for Salvation Army there, but she actually is a captain in Salvation Army. And she and her husband run a core there in, in Idaho Falls. And I have a daughter that lives here in Grass Valley. And she is um, a manager of a Starbucks in Lincoln. So, for temporarily, she's, um, I mean, that's a really good position to have, to be a manager of a Starbucks, actually. But she's probably going to be a division manager, or division chief, or whatever they call them in, in Starbucks world. She's very good with people. She's the epitome of friendliness. 
found her niche in the world and I so appreciate that all my children are following all my daughters my bio daughters are following their um, their bent um, I also have um, 11 other children that I've adopted plus my husband's my stepmother to four others and that many people life is not without tragedy oh, look at this maybe this is how she did it that worked huh different different ways um maybe if you're watching this as a video and you know how a better way to do it maybe you can video yourself and, um, and put it post it up so that i can see different ways of making this happen I'll put my <coughs> my Facebook page down in the notes. This is like my first YouTube thing ever, so well, not quite the first thing ever. I've put up some posts of um, of prod products that I have to sell on my eBay store that have that require someone to re <laughs> say it the right way that demand um, a video to go with them in order to show what they really are like and those are little shorts that are on my, vid on my um, YouTube so some of them are really silly and some of them are just the item trying to show how it works Anyway, just all that. Hmm, see, this is the size that I'm really trying to work for. Something about this size so that I can build a basket from that. We will see. It might take me a full year just to gather the materials for the basket. And then probably a full year to figure out how to put that kind of a basket together and do the overlay. I always got stuck on the overlay part, so I never did that. Now, I've um, had the opportunity from time to time here in the, in the Sacramento general area to do um, teaching on basket weaving. Not that I'm a great basket weaver, because I certainly am not, but I do know the basics, so I'm able to support and teach people how to do the basics and get a basket started and the, the weave that you need to do etc anyway um, what was the point of saying that um, I have told some of my classes that that's when they take my take a course with me or a little workshop with me that they will either fall in love with making basket or they will greatly appreciate the basket maker. They'll have a far greater um, appreciation value. They'll value the basket maker much more. Now look at this one. My gram would laugh at me. I should not have ever picked this. <laughs> oh, I was moving pretty fast out there because I was like, I gotta go, I gotta get back. Anyway, I don't have my knife out here with me, so I will cut those off and give those little sprites to my sister. Um, who I hope will make a basket again one day. I'm sure she will. Anyway, um, thank you for listening. Sorry this took such a long time, and the thing with... Um, The camera fell over, my glasses slid off, I had to bend over and around and get out of view of the camera, but you know, I'm thinking it's all okay. Thank you for joining me. This is Billy Wilson, your Act Tribal member. Good evening. I just want to put an end note to this particular video. I want to do a couple thank yous. Um, I want to thank my friend Tina Harrison, wonderful lady, lives here in Grass Valley. Um, my partner in crime, we go out and about 
searching for um, cultural items that we can find out in the wild and she's always ready to go when I'm ready to go and it puts up with my time frames and she's just amazing so um, just want to say thank you Tina for for doing that and um, I also want to thank um, my daughter Melissa Melissa went up with me to Humboldt and we went picking sticks um, while we were there for an MMIP event um, put on by the Iraq tribe at the tribal office there in Wichbeck and um, she um, learned how to pick the sticks and how to um, peel the sticks. In fact, she peeled all the sticks that we bought, we got while we were in Wichbeck. So um, I'm real proud of her uh, achievements and I'm also proud of her um, desire to be involved culturally with all of the, um, with the dances, with the um, gathering, with all of the things that are within our culture and that's just it makes me happy and i also want to thank my niece tara lynn Ifinia, and phil albers for um taking the time to review this video um i put it out there for them to see when we were there at the mmip event and um they were encouraging to me to go ahead and begin a, a youtube channel and use this video so this was really the first video I did. Just think of this as the prequel. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Chill.